All right, I'm gonna say it now, the new M5 MacBook Pro is the best affordable laptop for creators. If you're a video editor, content creator, graphic designer, or work in a creative field, get this and you'll be very, very happy. You can literally click out of the video right now. I'm kidding, don't, because I actually have a lot of things to share about this device. So I came from an M2 Max MacBook Pro. I got the M2 Max because at the time, the base model M2s just wasn't able to handle my workflow. For context, I create videos on YouTube and Instagram and I primarily showcase filmmaking and cinematography. So most of my videos are shot in 4K and above in resolution. I shoot in the higher settings and the highest frame rate and the M2 at that time just didn't cut it. And that's why I got the Max models because it has more cores and can handle more multitasking. And also, if you're a video editor, you'll know that render times are crucial. Because the longer something takes to render, the more friction it adds to your entire workflow. Now the problem, I got the 16-inch model. And because I travel a ton, it was really killing my back. The 16-inch isn't the heaviest laptop, but with the added weight of my cameras and lenses and microphones, it just wasn't the best travel experience. Also, I kept maxing out the carry-on weight limit whenever I'm flying, so it just really was very frustrating. I keep having to pay extra for baggage. So this year, I went the complete opposite route. What if I got Apple's most basic MacBook Pro, the base M5 chip? Will it be enough or do we need to potentially wait for the Pro and Max chips next year? Let's find out. All right, I won't spend too long talking about the design because it is almost identical to previous year's models. But all I can say is that I am super excited to be finally able to carry such a lightweight laptop. The 16 inch I had was really nice and immersive, but I also never felt that the 14 inch was small in any way. It's still plenty large for multitasking and I also opted for the nano texture display, which I regret not doing earlier. It doesn't look like those cheap screen protectors that reduce the clarity. You know those that, those that you stick on your MacBook screens? It really doesn't. It looks beautiful. The black still looks super crisp and vibrant. And I love the Ultra Retina XDR display on the MacBook Pro. It is, it's just one of the most beautiful displays I've ever seen. I tried traveling with this laptop recently and ooh mama is it so much lighter. When you're carrying a backpack for long hours and editing on the go, the extra weight of the 16 really becomes very noticeable after say two hours of carrying your backpack. So the 14 inch really does make my backpack feel a lot lighter on my shoulders. But a small laptop is useless if it can't handle our tasks. And with the M5 chip, that just isn't the case. This chip absolutely flies. It is super fast. The model I have here is the 4TB SSD version because like I said, I do travel a ton. So I need a lot of my files stored locally to edit my videos on the go. And because of that, having more storage just assists in the speed of everything. Also, Apple claims that the SSD speeds this year are twice as fast as last year's models. And I'm not gonna lie, it really shows. When I transfer large, large files, it shocks me how quickly it moves them. It handles a hundred gigabyte worth of files as if it's nothing. So I really do appreciate these year-on-year -year upgrades. If you're using, say, the M1, you'll notice a really huge difference in transfer speeds. Now, how about video editing on this? There's no mystery that ever since the M1 chip launched, it is already able to handle 4K video editing to a certain extent. On my M2 Max, I loved how fast the render speeds were and how snappy the playback was. But that's a Max chip with 64 gigabytes of RAM. That was a maxed out model in 2023, two years ago. And this is just the base M5 chip. And oh my gosh, it is just as fast. I'm so happy with this because I was just about to spend on a MacBook Pro M4 Max. But if the base model M5 chip is already able to deliver whatever that I need, then it just doesn't make sense to spend so much more. And that's why I'm saying a lot of creators will be happy with the base M5 chips. There is no need to upgrade and look at the Pro or the Max models unless you're doing super graphically demanding tasks. Now, there is one thing that I do notice on the M5 and it's the rendering. It's not slow by any means, but when I'm editing in Premiere Pro and I'm rendering my videos, I do notice that it's a hair bit slower than my M2 Max. And this has lesser to do with the raw horsepower of the chip, but a lot more to do with the lack of cores in the M5. If you really do want more cores, you have to wait for the Pro and the Max chips next year. Now, who should be looking at the Pro and the Max chips then? I think 3D designers, VFX artists, or anyone that is running more graphically intensive tasks. So yeah, there definitely is a place for everybody. But if you're just a content creator like me who used to struggle with the base model M chips, 
then the M5 is going to change your mind. I used to own an M1 MacBook Air and I loved it because I could edit 4K videos. But whenever I added extra stuff like masking or heavier color grading or graphics, it'll just start heating up on me or even crash on me. Fast forward a few years, this laptop operates and feels like a Max chip from like 3 years ago. Now I edit in Premiere Pro a lot and it warp stabilizes almost instantly. And again, I'm stabilizing 4K footage on this device and it just flies. I could play Cyberpunk on max settings with barely any frame drops or overheating. I can also run AI tasks a lot faster like upscaling a video in Topaz AI. And if you have ever done that, you just know how frustrating it is to run Topaz because it is literally analyzing every single frame of your video and upscaling it with AI. So AI tasks used to be really slow on traditional older Intel-based devices, but now ever since the M chips came out, it just got gradually faster and faster. And with the M5, what used to take hours now only takes two to three times shorter. See, the thing about Apple's M series chips, they're bumping the performance up every single year drastically. Like they're getting really, really good. But the thing is that our workflows aren't really changing drastically every single year. Three years ago, I was shooting 4K 10-bit 422 videos on s 3 on my Sony camera. And three years later, I'm still shooting in the exact same settings. So what that means is that every single year, we can get by with the base model more and more. Maybe the M6 chip by then will even be overkill for some people. Now is the M5 invincible? Not really. I tried playing Cyberpunk for an hour straight and yeah, I definitely heard the fans kicking in. The battery life also died on me a lot sooner than expected. Granted, I was playing in max settings, full brightness, in a non-air-conditioned room in the highest frame rate, so yeah, I definitely pushed the M5 chip to its limit, so that was really impressive. And I still got to play it for 2-3 to three hours before the battery died on me, which was very acceptable. On a normal day use, it definitely lasts me an entire day. If I'm editing videos non-stop in a cafe, I can work from let's say morning till evening before the battery starts reaching like 20%. But if I'm just generally browsing and typing documents, then yes, it'll last me the entire day. Alright, now who is this M5 MacBook Pro for? I think if you're already holding on to a Pro chip from the M3 onwards, then I don't see a reason for you to upgrade unless you really want the updated SSD speeds. If you're holding on to say an M2 MacBook Air, then yeah, you should definitely try upgrading to this one because Air models just don't have a physical fan inside and the Pro models do. And this laptop only comes in at $1399, which in the grand scheme of laptops is a pretty good price. And if you're like me, holding on to an M2 and you notice that battery life is depleting way faster, then yeah, the M5 is definitely worth a shot because my M2 Max uh, is starting to have a lot of battery issues. But if you want the absolute best M5 chip, then you gotta wait for next year's M5 Pro and M5 Max. For now though, the M5 is freaking bloody good. Alright then, thanks for listening to me ramble.